So y'all know how much I like e-bikes on my channel. Imagine if you can bike in the air. Oh, hell yeah. What's up, y'all? So a few weeks ago, Toyota released a video of a vehicle called SkyDrive. So what SkyDrive is, is a human piloted drone. And uh, if y'all can tell from my channel, I love drones. So they're saying this is the first human piloted drone. I don't think that's true. I think we've had a few other ones. But this does bring into question, how close are we to having a flying car or a personal aircraft as a part of our daily commute? So I figured why not us review this video together, but I also want us to view my personal top three flying cars or personal aircraft devices that may be available for us to purchase soon. So I want you to review my top three and comment below on which one you would feel comfortable flying in as a part of your daily commute. Based on your comment, I'll reach out to the company, see if they can give me some information regarding how much it costs, whether they have a new model, um, any additional flight footage, and that might be one of my next videos. So without further ado, let's check the video out. All right, let's uh, check out this takeoff here. Um, the propellers seem pretty powerful, man. Uh, I don't think I've ever flown a drone that had propellers on the top and the bottom uh, per post there. Uh, looks like it's only a one-seater, um, which is a, a bummer. But um, look at the vertical takeoff. Looks like we will have vertical takeoff with this vehicle, which um, can be good and bad. What if it's windy outside and um, now you have to account for the wind because you're taking off vertically. So I wonder if the drone will have a auto hover where you can click a button. It'll automatically get you to a certain height and then kind of hover for you so that you can decide whether you want to turn or go straight um, but so far so good it does look a little shaky I'm assuming that's an expert drone flyer in there but it still looks a little shaky so I would assume that it doesn't have like an auto stabilization um, where the drone kind of stabilizes for you. I think you will have to be doing everything yourself. I bet he is nervous as hell. I, I, I know this company has been working on this aircraft for several years and spent millions of dollars. So if I crash, this company is done for. Woosa. Woosa. <laughs> I would be nervous. I'm not going to lie. If I know we've been working on it several years and um, our future development depends on this test flight and test flights we have coming up. So, But turns look pretty solid. Um, look like he did a lateral move earlier. He moved to the left. So um, this is pretty cool. So far so good. Um, I would want to have more control though considering that there isn't a lot of wind here at least I would assume that there's not a lot of wind here it seems like it wouldn't be as shaky you see how shaky this is so uh, I would wonder how I would fly if there's actual wind outside you know if um, it's already this shaky and you're indoors kind of indoors and I uh, landed at the spot he took off from so not bad not bad um, so now Let's look into my top three personal flying aircraft that I think are a little bit better than this one. Let's start with my number three. All right, so coming in at number three is probably the most attractive vehicle on this list, the Aeromobile. Now, I believe the most current version is the 4.0, but uh, the previous version 3.0 has actually taken flight in the last few years. On the ground, it goes at max speed of 99 miles per hour in the air it's 124 miles per hour it does have an autopilot and i mean look at this thing it's a really good looking aircraft it looks like a tesla 
that you can take to the sky uh, kind of looks like something fresh out of the movies it has an advanced parachute deployment system it has airbags for when you're driving on the road it takes regular gasoline uh, the takeoff weight is about 2600 pounds you will need at least 50 feet in order to take off and it can transform from car mode to flight mode in three minutes now because this is pretty much taking an airplane approach to your uh, flying car you will need a pilot's license in order to fly this aircraft but that's no big deal you can just go to pilot school and become a pilot right <laughs> now what i don't like about this aircraft is because it's pretty much an airplane you won't have the ability to hover coming in at number two is a hover bike called scorpion 3 which was created in dubai so y'all know how much I like e-bikes on my channel. Imagine if you can bike in the air. Oh, hell yeah. So obviously this bike is taking a drone approach. Now I think these will soon be available to purchase at $150,000. You should be able to fly in drone mode for about 40 minutes. I do believe it's operated by an electric battery which you can charge from home. The bike weighs about 253 pounds. The safe flight distance from the ground is about 16 feet. The maximum speed while in the air will be about 60 miles an hour. Charge at home in about 3 hours. Of course I like the vehicles. I like bikes. But also at 16 feet you will be above most road vehicles and traffic. And also I love the ability that you can hover from one place to another. Now 40 minutes is not a whole lot of flight time to be honest, but I'm pretty sure that flight time will get longer as they release more and more versions of this vehicle. Now this also has an emergency landing system and something that they call the kill switch. Not really sure what that does in regards to drone. If you know what that means, please comment below. Doesn't look like there are any additional safety features like a parachute that comes out of the drone if you're losing control or uh, some type of way that the drone can keep going if you run out of batteries enough to guide you to a safe landing So if you fall you're a f This is a Ryan Little production So coming in at number one is a PAL V uh, This is basically a three-wheel flying car now this is not the best looking uh, vehicle on the outside, but on the inside it kind of looks like a um, luxury sports car. You know, it got leather in it um, and all the bells and whistles. Now although this vehicle pretty much looks like a car with uh, helicopter propellers attached to it, this is not a helicopter. Um, you cannot take off vertically on purpose in this vehicle. In fact, the creators consider this vehicle more of a gyroplane. The blades of a PAL V are not powered, like they're not uh, powered by an engine. Uh, they rotate according to the wind. So they kind of act like a parachute while you're in the air. So this means you will have to generate speed in order to take off as if you were in an airplane. You will need an airplane license in order to operate this vehicle. And I really like this gyroplane option because it kind of prevents you stalling in the air. So if you stall, the blades are just going to turn according to the wind. And hopefully you can use that to guide your way back down to land. Now it does look like this vehicle has an auto hover option. This vehicle can switch from driving mode to flying mode in 5 to 10 minutes. On the ground it can go up to 100 miles per hour. While in the air it can go 112 miles per hour. The highest you can get in the air is about 3,500 meters. So that's about 2 miles from the ground. You will be able to get gas at your local gas station. And it does look like they're going to release two different versions. One will be a Sport Edition and one will be a Pioneer Edition. And I believe the Pioneer Edition will be the most expensive edition. Looks like it has a flying range of about 248 miles. So to me, this vehicle seems to be the safest flight for the longest distance. And because of that, uh, this is my number one choice for uh, upcoming aerial vehicles that you'll be able to purchase so uh, comment below let me know which of these vehicles you would feel comfortable flying from point A to point B 
based on your comment, I'll reach out to the company. Thank you all for watching. Peace.